Welcome everybody to our Why a TOTD webinar this morning. My name is Cheryl. I work with Rehab Essentials and Marymount University. I will be the host today for the webinar. Today, as we go through the webinar, we're gonna be focusing on why earning a TOTD is important, why you should consider getting your TOTD, and then we're gonna have a expert Q&A section with Dr. Jillian Ray at the end of our session. So please make sure that you stay on for that. We will be taking questions during the session. Please feel free to use the Q&A at the bottom of the screen, raise your hand, or send a question via chat. We'll take all of those and we will wait till the end of the session to ask those, but uh, feel free to uh, send us those questions any way you like. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce Susan Lynn, who is one of the presenters today. Susan? Hello, everyone. I am Susan Lynn. I am the TOTD Program Director at Marymount University, and I have a background in pediatrics. And I was the former research director at the American Occupational Therapy Association. And now we, I will ask Veronica Rowe to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Veronica Rowe. I'm the assistant program director of, of the Rehab Essentials TOTD. I have a, a background in clinical work as well as academia, and my area of research specialty is in neurorehabilitation uh, for the older adult and geriatrics. Um, my area of preference is to work with people with strokes and brain injuries, uh, but I'm excited to work with you in this program and help with that. And I will pass it over to Dr. Ray to give us a brief introduction. Hi, I am Dr. Uh, Jillian Ray, and um, my uh, specialty area is in uh, pediatrics. And currently, I teach as an adjunct um, instructor, um, and I'm teaching the evidence-based practice course. Um, um, aside from that, I teach uh, pediatrics, the pediatrics course at NYU, and I teach the teaching how to teach um, as well. And um, during uh, the rest of my week, I spend in my own practice, I have my own uh, OT uh, clinical practice um, and doing presentations and workshops here in the District of Columbia. Thank you, Dr. Lin, Dr. Rowe, and Dr. Ray. Now, I'm gonna ask Dr. Lin to talk about why you should earn a TOTD. Dr. Lin? So we would like to talk today about how you can elevate the profession with a budget-friendly option, and that's our TOTD. Uh, but first, we'd like to delineate more clearly what the difference is between entry-level OTD pro programs and the transitional OTD program we're offering. So while both programs do confer a doctor of occupational therapy and have evidence-based practice, research content, and advocacy, um, there are some differences. For example, the entry level um, is all about preparing students to become occupational therapists and to sit for that MBCOT exam. So they are required to do field work and um, an experiential component. Whereas the transitional OTD is a post-professional program. And so it's only available to those who are currently practicing occupational therapists. And so it's designed for the working professional and it's flexible and uh, feasible to, to do while still working. Uh, also, some people are interested in getting the TOTD uh, because they would like to teach someday. And that's important because a post-professional doctorate degree is actually preferred in um, academia. 50% of uh, full-time faculty are required to have a post-professional post doctorate according to ACOAT. And we also 
believe that the transitional OTD will help therapists assume leadership roles in clinical practice, academia, or in the community. So in this um, image here, we are trying to depict that we are building upon your entry-level education and then adding your expert professional experience and then taking that to the next level at, in what we call the expert level growth so that you're uh, getting best current practices and knowledge and that's all leading to a higher level of practice. Now, in terms of new opportunities, I'm not seeing, oh, there we go. Um, we think that the, this TOTD uh, leads to many opportunities such as clinical leadership, academia, program development, such as uh, in the community, if you see a need in the community. Uh, also, of course, clinical research, and then healthcare administration, um, nonprofit administration, and leadership. I've even known um, OTs who assumed leadership positions in nonprofits such as Easter Seals, or even in the federal government, such as in CDC. Now, in terms of expert level growth, what do we mean by that? We're, we're referring to educational um, growth and also um, leadership. So in education, we want to build on entry-level education to grow professional knowledge, skills, critical reasoning, and professionalism. And in terms of leadership, we are learning to critically reflect and engage and be prepared for leadership roles. Now, finally, um, what we mean by contribution and elevation is we're really taking that expert level education to the next level uh, where the leadership and professionalism are contributing to our profession of occupational therapy. And we're elevating it in numerous ways, such as research, such as advocacy, such as um, in teaching. And for us, it was really important to be able to offer this all in an easily accessible online format where working professionals could learn uh, when it was best for them. Now, here's a, a great uh, graphic to show four levels of what we mean by expert level educational growth. We're referring to advanced knowledge, enhanced competency, enriched practice, and refined professionalism. An example is where we are connecting advanced theory and concepts of the profession and then research with practical clinical knowledge. So you'll find there, there's always a practical component uh, to our courses. We also focus on clinical reasoning, which is now um, uh, called professional reasoning. And we are also focusing on outcomes. We have a class uh, solely focusing on measuring outcomes. And that is uh, a big driving focus in the recent occupational therapy practice framework. We also prepare our uh, students to be consumers of evidence-based practice, become lifelong learners, and be able to implement what they've learned in the real world. And hopefully that creates an immediate impact while they're in the program. And all of this is to advance the practice uh, in the future. We think that this expert level knowledge and skills and competency plus your current clinical experience creates the, um, the uh, right conditions 
to groom future leaders of the profession. Now, when we are referring to expert level leadership growth, we are uh, talking about uh, having you demonstrate self-directed practice. Uh, so many of our courses are self-paced. And so you are learning uh, at your own um, speed and, you, and your own schedule. We also uh, want to enhance interprofessional coordination, partnership and leadership opportunities, because let's face it, uh, rehabilitation is a team sport. And so we need to be able to collaborate with our colleagues. We also support diversity through leadership development, educational um, practice, and organizations and global settings. So we want to be able to increase um, diversity. And so we welcome all students. And we also want to make sure that all people are at the table when we do things like advocacy. We also want to use ethical leadership and assumed power to benefit clients of diverse backgrounds and um, express leadership in terms of policy analysis, theory, and research. There are many ways to um, express leadership. And so one of the key things we have in our program is a course on leadership and management. And we'd like to see you create your own leadership style and, and figure out what's the most effective um, methods or strategies you like to use or are especially talented at in order to um, effect change. So we hope that our graduates will be able to contribute as leaders and advocate to healthcare um, and also help change social policies of the state uh, and then at the national and international levels. We also want to support diversity and um, expand opportunities leading to innovation. We really see that um, occupational therapists are, are skilled at seeing where gaps are. And then if we give them the chance, they can be uh, innovators and, and suggest different ways of doing things and um, create New, new programs and innovate. We also need our graduates to be advocates of the profession, uh, especially as healthcare reform uh, keeps continuing to develop and payment reform for uh, health services develops. So we need voices at all levels to advocate for OT. As well as scholarly inquiry, um, that's, what I just mean by that is that we all have questions as we practice. And so those questions can be turned into scholarly inquiry into clinical research projects. And our program can help you uh, develop that research question, appraise evidence, and then design a study and collect data to answer that question. We also hope that our graduates will be mentors and enhance um, occupation-centered practices, as well as groom the future leaders of our profession. Now, all of these um, aspirations are, of course, designed to help improve client care and outcomes and then broaden your career opportunities. And finally, um, together, all of that elevates the profession. So I'm going to stop here and just ask if there are any questions. Okay. Susan, we do have a question specific to capstones. 
Okay. And the question really is, will I be able to choose my own capstone in the Marymount program? Yes, um, but I will say that it has to be approved by the faculty and meet the capstone criteria. The capstone project is a design to be a culmination of everything you've learned in terms of um, knowledge and skills and, and really integrate that all into a um, meaningful project. So we have two courses, one's capstone one to uh, design the project and then uh, capstone two is really to implement collect data and analyze and write it up. So uh, those two courses should um, be able to help you, you know, conduct your capstone project in an area of interest to you and, and your advisor. Perfect. And we do have another question, Dr. Len. Is the program self-paced or are there class discussions and or live meetings? Do we have deadlines within the semester? So the, there, it is a self-paced um, course, but there are deadlines within the course. Every instructor has, has um, sets the, their own dates of when certain sections and certain assignments are due. Um, and so that, of course, is beneficial because if everything was due at the end, you would not have any time for discussion or discourse. So, um, so there is some, a good deal of flexibility. There are no live uh, synchronous classes or discussion boards. Um, it's all asynchronous. So it should be flexible enough to accommodate working schedules. Thank you, Dr. Lynn. It looks like we don't have any questions on this section any further. Uh, Jonathan, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you to talk a little bit more specifically about the TOTD program. Jonathan, you are on mute. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me see if I can help you, Jonathan. While they're working on that, if I could just add a bit to the capstone uh, question. Um, our capstone, capstone is designed to synthesize knowledge that you gain throughout all of the coursework. Um, and you can focus on a practice area of your choice uh, through the development and completion of the doc doctoral capstone. So it is your choice with some guidance from the, the faculty. And, and we ask that students choose a capstone within the areas of clinical practice skills, research skills, administration, leadership, program and policy development, advocacy, education, or theory development. So there is uh, many, many areas within that you can choose to do your capstone in uh, within your own specialty or practice area that you choose. Thank you, Dr. Rowe. Hopefully everyone can hear me now. Sorry, my mute button literally just disappeared from my screen. Now, some very good points there brought up by Dr. Rowe on the whole purpose of the capstone and really what you want that area to focus in on. So what I'm going to talk about here a little bit is why Marymount University, why and who is Rehab Essentials. Uh, Rehab Essentials, we are a key partnering institution that provides a whole degree curriculum for universities. And what's nice about that is, is we are focused on the post-professional programs, the post-professional degrees, transitional degrees, uh, and that working family professional. 
So as Dr. Lin alluded to earlier, you know, we want to make sure that we are maintaining that balance between life, work, and school. So all of that is added into making sure that the financials make sense, making sure that you can access your content at any time, um, making sure that we don't have bloated courses that have unreasonable expectations for someone who is not only going back to school, uh, but also has their career that they're still working in and also has a family that they may be having to attend to as well. Uh, so everything, again, online, you have 24-7, 365 access to the course material starting on day one of the semester. And that access to the course material, you'll have usually about 90% of that course material on day one. Some assignments are discussion board assignments, so you may have some things where you're waiting on some peers to interact with you in that fashion. But again, it is an asynchronous fashion. So, um, and one of the best things I think about our program is, is that we are not limited to the university faculty. Now there's anything wrong with university faculty, but being a partner with, the, with, with Marymount University, it allows us to bring in our own faculty and we look for the experts in the field, the experts that are on this call right now, Dr. Lin, Dr. Ray, Dr. Rowe. Uh, as you'll see, when you look at our website, we have a whole list of individuals who are at either different institutions and they are the expert in their field, uh, or they may be out and they are practicing and they're the expert in their field. We've also tried to condense the program as much as possible so you can get your journey as, or get to the end of your journey as quickly as possible. So. It takes five semesters to go through the program if you have a master's um, in occupational therapy or any other master's to get to your uh, OTD. Uh, and five semesters is essentially equivalent to roughly about 20 months. There's three semesters per year. So you'll have essentially four semesters of uh, kind of strict didactic work. And then your last semester, you have a course plus your full capstone. Once you get into the courses, they're pretty easy to look at, you know, and they're also very digestible. So you're not going to have to sit there for an hour listening to a lecture. Uh, one of the things that we also pride ourselves on is part of our team is we bring in individuals who are the experts in online learning. Uh, so they help us build our courses so that way we have digestible content that is usually roughly 15 minutes or so per lecture. You may get a little bit up there in the 20, 20-ish 20 minute per lecture, but that way, if you have time over a lunch break and you want to sit down and listen to a lecture, you can by all means go ahead and do that. Biggest thing that we all know is budget is a concern. So one of the things, again, being a key partner with Marymount University is that we were able to go to Marymount and say, we don't want our tuition to be more than X amount. As you are looking at different, uh, different programs, you'll find that they may have a shorter amount of credits, uh, but you'll also may also find that the per credit cost is significantly more than what we are. So for our course, uh, it is 485 per credit. That's a flat rate at 485 per credit. There's no additional technology fees. There's no additional you know, library fees, it's 485 per credit. You also do have a proctoring fee, but that is paid directly to the third party. And that's a federal mandate that we have a third party proctoring you. Um, but then outside of that, for the whole tuition, it's roughly $14,500-ish. Um, and then again, that is also paid per semester. And another thing that Marymount does allow you to do is it allows you to kind of create your own personal um, payment plan within each semester. So you are billed per credit per semester uh, that you are taking in that semester. But if you need to break that up a little bit, Marymount does have options for you to, to help break that up. <clears throat> so again, <laughs> Excuse me, the, the curriculum itself, it is a set curriculum. So you are taking a set, uh, set number of courses per semester. As I mentioned, we are paid per semester and Marymount does have a lot of flexibility within their payment options. So even though you do have 
say roughly six credits per semester. And at 485 per credit, you can break that up. I do believe in as many as five payments uh, throughout the semester load. The big thing is you are perusing around different transitional or post-professional OTD programs. Uh, you may see a variety in credits that uh, you have to take. And one of those things is, is that is mandated by the regional accrediting body. Marymount is in the Southeast region. So that is the uh, Southern Association of Colleges and Schools and Commission on Colleges. Uh, or SACS, or SACS COC. Uh, so this is what you want to make sure that whatever program you are looking at has oversight of a regional accrediting body, because as you go on, and if you do intend to advance your academic career above uh, a, um, a TOTD, or you know, you want to go on and get, who knows, who knows what comes in the future, you know, PhD, uh, EDD, Whatever courses you are taking at Marymount University, you will be able to get a transcript and show that they are accredited courses. Um, ACOAT, the accrediting body for entry-level courses, they do not accredit transitional courses. However, you do want to make sure your degree is an accredited degree by a regional accrediting body, uh, whether that's in the Southeast region, so it'll be SACS. Um, in the Northwest region, uh, there is uh, the... Um, NWCCU. Uh, so you just want to make sure whatever program you are looking at, whether it's this program or another one, it is an accredited program. So we do have two pathways. If you do have your master's, it's a pretty straight, flat forward, 30 credit program, five semesters, as I mentioned, roughly 20 months, three semesters per year. And the total fee right there you see is $14,550. Those estimated fees, that again is, I mean, you, you do have an application fee of roughly $50. You also have that per semester proctoring fee, which is roughly $35 per semester. Outside of that, we don't tell you, hey, get the books from here. So you can get used books. So book fees may vary a little bit. Um, and then we do have a bachelor's option. For those of you who uh, have attained your bachelor's in OT and you don't have any other advanced masters, uh, we have several different pathways and several very interesting pathways to allow you to progress from a bachelor's to a master's. And again, it doesn't have to be an OT. Actually, a lot of the pathways are either in the health and public um, wellness realm, and then also some in health technology as well. And then once you reach that 30 credit level, you can then go on and get and enter into the TOTD program that we have. Application requirements, they are minimal because you just looking to go get your OTD is enough really for us. You are a professional. You have shown that you want to advance your career, advance your academic career, and hopefully advance the profession. Um, so to get into the program, we want to make sure that obviously you have a master's uh, in OT and you have at least an OT degree. Again, you may have a bachelor's in OT and then maybe an MBA. Uh, which would be fine as well. And then uh, just a copy of your uh, US OT license, uh, depending on what state that is. Any state is perfectly fine. If you did graduate from a non ACODE institute and uh, immigrated here to the US, you just do have one additional step where you do, do need to have your transcripts evaluated by any member association of NASIS or ACE, a pretty straightforward platform. So. You know, we do want to, you know, again, help advance the working family OT out there. So one of the nice things about our program is you should be able to balance that um, and get you to your end goal of getting your OTD and then actually applying that knowledge as you're going through the program as well. So that is all I have to say. We'll pass it on to Dr. Ray. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I'm going to go ahead really quickly and I'm going to allow our participants to talk and ask questions. So you guys should be able to unmute yourselves now. And I'm going to go ahead also and currently stop my share. And we will have it hopefully focus on Dr. Ray here in just one moment. Perfect. All right. So Dr. Ray. 
One of the first questions that we have, and actually I do wanna thank you for being here. Um, very interested to hear your thoughts on the TOGD, especially with the broad range of experience you have and the global reach in your experience. It's, it's just wonderful to see. So thank you again for joining us today. My pleasure. Uh, in terms of the OTD, what advantages does the post-professional TOTD offer over a master's degree? You know, I would say that, you know, to start off with, we are, I mean, this, this um, degree and the program and the curriculum is designed for um, an occupational therapist who's been practicing. So for starters, um, the um, quality or the caliber of student has, they already have a lot of experience or, I mean, I should say varying, uh, varying degrees and amount of experience in just you know all kinds of settings. So the students who are currently in the program have such a diverse background. And so I think um, that's different uh, from a master's, you know, just right off right off the jump because somebody who's in an entry level program would be interacting with uh, individuals who have not been practicing to say. So they haven't had any experience as an occupational therapist. Whereas in the TOTD, the students are interacting with their peers. And so each person comes with a wealth of experience and knowledge uh, in just, you know, so many different practice settings. So just that in itself provides such a rich environment um, for learning, for growing, for evolving and so on. So I think that's a, a, a market difference in just the type of um, individuals will be interacting with when you compare a master's degree, entry-level master's, as opposed to a TOTD, uh, being post-professional. And of course, the other is, you know, I've, this is an opportunity to really get uh, a really deep understanding of particular topics because the way that the curriculum is designed, students get an opportunity to really learn about um, OT theories um, in a very deep way, um, as well as outcome measures. You know, when you're practicing OT, we use a lot of different measurements, but we never, you know, there aren't courses designed in a master's degree to really take you in depth to look at, you know, outcomes and outcome measures. Um, so that's, that is important. And as students will be developing a capstone as a culminating uh, project, uh, understanding outcome measures is critical to that process. So designing a capstone project, but knowing you know, the best type of measurement to measure what you're doing in your capstone and the effect you're having um, with that capstone is critical. And so that, that is another um, advantage in terms of doing a post-professional um, doctoral degree in occupational therapy. Thank you very much for that, Dr. Ray. Uh, we do have a live question for you. Tom, you wanna go ahead and ask your question? Hi, yes, thanks. Um, I'm interested in teaching, you know, in a faculty role for occupational therapy. And um, you know, I see all require some type of post-professional degree. Um, and uh, could you kind of expand or answer in terms of uh, you know the, the uh, post-professional OTD versus like a, an EDD or, or, or that type of thing? So I think that you know, obviously, an EDD is just particularly focused on teaching. So it's a adopted in education. So the field is education. So all of the courses, the curriculum are designed to that industry. Whereas with the TOTD, um, it's designed for occupational therapists that have been practicing. Um, and the course includes a, a class on teaching and learning. So it's kind of a really great relationship between being an OT and learning how to teach. <laughs> so I think that's fabulous because, you know, often we've, um, I, I think many of us in this room probably who, who are teaching, um, we're never really taught how to teach. We came into our classroom as an OT, you know, in an OT program and we had all the clinical skills, but, you know, how do we translate our OT knowledge to uh, future OTs? And in part, as part of the doctoral program, 
we are now teaching uh, students how to teach. How do you take your OT knowledge and how do you translate that to future OTs? Um, and so we're learning about you know, the science um, behind teaching and learning. So I think to me, that's great because you're not going to get a separate degree in education. And an EDD is, it takes a little bit longer than an OTD. This, the TOTD here at Marymount is a year, year and a half, correct? Versus an, an EDD, which could be three years plus, depending on you know, how long you take to complete that degree. So being an OT, I think it really takes your OT brain and then helps you to figure out, you know, how do I translate my knowledge as an OT? Because most likely you're going to want to teach in an OT program. Um, and so you're toward those um, different teaching methods and, you know, what is adult learning? So it's kind of built into the program itself which in my opinion, you know, unless you really, really want an ADD makes it unnecessary in a way because you're coming, you're graduating from this program, uh, learning how to teach. Great, thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. And Julianne, I do have a couple more questions for you unless there's some other ones shows up here, but do OTs with a post-professional OTD receive a higher salary? That's a that's a popular question. <laughs> I think um, many many uh, individuals who decide to um, get a, a post professional uh, doctorate in OT ask this question about salary, and I think you know even individuals who decide to take on the entry level are asking the same question: Does it mean we'll make more money? And you know that is such a it's a big question in the sense that it depends on so many factors. You know, it depends on the practice setting you're in. But I, I do think that one of the things that does make a difference in terms of salary, when you're looking at somebody with a post-professional uh, doctorate in occupational therapy, as opposed to somebody with an entry-level master's or even an entry-level doctorate, the person with post-professional comes with experience. So they've been practicing uh, as an OT, they may have even had experience teaching. So I think the person with post-professional definitely has more negotiating salary power, so to speak, because they already, they're arriving at this job with a portfolio, whereas the other individual does, does not. Um, so I think that's definitely gives you the edge when it comes to negotiating salary. And of course, they, you know, we all know there are industries that typically pay more, you know, maybe it's in the um, government or private practice um, and so on. So, but I do think the degree itself, the, the, the difference in the degree with its post-professional entry level does give you um, an advantage in negotiating salary. Thank you. It looks like we currently have two more questions for you. Uh, one is how does your TOTD help prepare me for a leadership role? You know, when I think about leadership, I think about, you know, I think sometimes it's the obvious definition comes to many of our minds. When we think leadership, we think, um, you know, I'm going to um, have people, you know, I'm going to manage people or I'm going to um, be in charge, I should say, be in charge of people. And that's, you know, you, the, the sort of typical idea of leadership. But the way that our curriculum is designed and the way that we think about leadership is that leadership is more about influence and not just about telling people what to do or, um, you know, having people follow me or listen to me or, um, but it's more about influence. And so when you look at the coursework, so we do have a course on leadership and a course on professionalism that details you know, how, to, how to lead um, from different um, levels. But I think if you look at the curriculum itself, it's also built in. There's opportunities from the beginning for students to start to learn about you know, what is leadership and how do I influence people, regardless of the context I'm in, where I am, how can I lead? How can I, and, and we, you know, how can I influence? And if you look at, you know, some of our, our courses have built in discussion boards where students interact with each other. And those offer opportunities uh, to apply what students are learning um, in leadership. 
but they also offer opportunities for our students to step up. I think the, uh, and I, when I say step up, I mean to, to come into this role as, as, as a leader influencing each other. Um, and I think the other opportunity is in Capstone. Uh, I think Capstone is a very potent um, opportunity to, uh, for leadership because this involves, you know, it's culmination of the, the degree, but it involves developing um, with its research or developing a program that's to be implemented. And so the, the graduate is now looked at, you know, as a leader in this area, you know, whatever that topic was that they decided to build or the project, they're now viewed professionally as a leader, um, as an expert in that area. So again, I think, you know, our, our curriculum is centered on leadership is, you know, it's, a, it's about 360 degrees of, you know, uh, from leading from the middle, the top behind, but it's about how do we, how do we teach our students to influence um, using their position uh, with this post-professional doctorate that sets them apart um, from students who just have, you know, an entry-level master's. Wonderful. That, that actually leads very well almost into the next question, which is uh, what course do you teach and what exactly does it cover? <laughs> well, I teach the course on evidence-based practice. And so in this course, uh, the students are learning uh, to be responsible consumers of evidence. And I say responsible because, you know, there's a huge responsibility that comes with, with using evidence as, as a creator of evidence and as a user. And, you know, I have to say uh, the course just began now um, in the summer semester and uh, I am having so much fun teaching it and interacting with the students. And, you know, there's one thing when you create an assignment or you create a discussion board, having never met your students, um, but hoping for all these objectives and outcomes and ideas. And then now I'm meeting, meeting them and interacting with them. And uh, the caliber of the students are just exemplary. And they've just really blown me away, uh, to be honest. Um, so just, you know, looking at the work they're producing, how they're interacting with each other, uh, the way that they're understanding the material as it relates to evidence-based practice. And they're now learning how to appraise evidence. So they started out learning about, you know, how do I search for evidence? Where do I go? What databases? Um, what are keywords? What are Boolean operators? Like how, you know, so they've, they've been looking at that and now they have this big uh, task of, okay, I've searched everywhere. I've picked a topic. I have a question based on my practice situation and my clients I'm currently working with, but is it worth changing my practice over? So now they're busy looking at how do I rate evidence? You know, which one should I use, not use? And so they're working on critically appraising uh, evidence. So um, it's been, it's just been phenomenal. And I would say the students are having a lot of fun and they're learning from each other. And, you know, the, the space that's been created is safe to where they're really being vulnerable. You know, many of them said, gosh, I was scared. I was worried. And, but you know what, this has been so good. I'm, I'm learning so much. So I, as, a, as an instructor, I'm feeling good that they were feeling you know, overwhelmed, but because the way that our courses are structured uh, and the way that it was set up, they're feeling like they're not alone and that they're supported. So that was good to hear from the students and that they're learning. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Ray. It's very exciting to hear about your course and about your thoughts on the TOTD. Uh, right now, we don't have any additional questions. I will open it up into any verbal questions. I know we are running up against our time allotment. So we'll just hang out here a couple minutes, see if anyone has any questions. Otherwise, thank you for everyone who joined us today. We enjoyed having you. Uh, feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself and ask any questions you like as well. Perfect. Well, I think with that, I'll go ahead and we'll end our webinar for the day. Thank you again for attending. And we hope to see you in another 
webinar in the future. I do have one quick note real quick. If you are interested in reaching out to any of the experts who spoke today, Dr. Lynn, Dr. Rowe, Dr. Sheeler, or Dr. Ray, please feel free to either reach out via our website, marymount.rehabessentials.com, or you can also reach out at social at rehabessentials.com and we will get the experts in contact with you. Thank you again and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye everyone.